Hey everyone, happy Monday to you. It's time with Tiffy. Thank you so much for following along with me on my channel and tuning in with me as I'm reading Bible in one year. Well, I just finished reading 2 Samuel chapter 7 yesterday, where I read about how David cares for the ark, God's covenant with David, and David's prayer and thanksgiving. And today I am drinking bitter melon tea. And to pair with that, I have these chicken salad sandwiches, or tea sandwiches as you would call them. All right, the benefits of this bitter melon tea is that its high levels of antioxidants make it ideal for preventing chronic diseases, such as coronary heart disease and autoimmune disease. It can help prevent osteosclerosis, as well as coronary heart disease, heart attacks, and strokes, and has high levels of vitamin A, C, and B, potassium, magnesium, and zinc. All right, before I eat, let's pray. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, I thank you for this drink and food, for the health and nourishment of my body, for Christ's sake. And I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with wisdom and understanding as I'm refreshed by your word. I thank you for this daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. I really want to thank all of my subscribers and those who are following along with me and getting me to 1K yesterday. Now, if this is content that you like, you can hit the subscribe button, click on that thumbs up, and click on that notification bell, and I'll let you know when I post a new reading. I post one every morning. It's really good. All right, you guys go get your tea and sip with me. I'm going to start reading. All right, we are on day 93 of Bible in one year, and I'm going to be reading 2 Samuel chapters 8 all the way through 11. 2 Samuel 8, verse 1 through 18. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines and subdued them, and David took Methag Amah from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab, forcing them down to the ground. He measured them off with a line. With two lines he measured off those to be put to death, and with one full line those to be kept alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. And he went to recover his territory at the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,000 chariots, 700 horsemen, and 20,000 foot soldiers. Also, David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough of them for 100 chariots. When the Syrians of Damascus came to Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought tribute. The Lord preserved David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold that had belonged to the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Betha and from Barotha, cities of Hadadezer, King David took a large amount of bronze. Then Toy, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer. Then Toy sent Joram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with Toy. At Joram, brought with him articles of silver, articles of gold, and articles of bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord 
along with the silver and gold that he had dedicated from all the nations which he had subdued from Syria, from Moab, from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, from Amalek, and from the spoil of Hadadezar, the son of Rael, king of Jobah. And David made himself a name when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered judgment and justice to all his people. Joab, the son of Jeriah, was over the army of Jehoshaphat, the son of Eluid, was recorder. Jadok, the son of Ehutab, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priest. Sariah, the scribe, Benaniah, the son of Jehoadiah, was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and David's son were chief ministers. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 through 13. Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left in the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul, to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who was lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, and lo Debar. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, from lo Debar. Now when Mephahizatheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephizabeth, and he answered, Here is your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore you to all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and all to all his house. For therefore, and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all my lord, the king has commanded his servant, so will your servant do, as Mephibosheth said to king. He shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both feet. And it happened after this that the king of the people of Ammon died, and Hanan, his son, reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the son of Nahash, and his father showed kindness to me. So David sent the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servant came into the land of the people of Ammon. And the princes of the people in Ammon said to Hanan, the Lord, Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city, to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Therefore Hanan took David's servants, shaved off half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Wait at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, the king of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth-Rael. Micah? 
and the Syrian of Zobah, 20,000 foot soldiers, and from the king of Mecca, 1,000 men, and from Ishtob, 12,000 men. Now when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. Then the people of Ammon came out and put themselves in battle, array at the entrance of the gate. And the Syrians of Jobah, Beth Rahab, Ishtob, and Makkah were by themselves in the field. Then Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind. He chose some of Israel's best and put them in battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishiah, his brother, that he might set them in battle array against the people of Ammon. Then he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the people of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near for the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. When the people of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fleeing, they also fled before Abishai and entered the city. So Joab returned from the people of Ammon and went to Jerusalem. When the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered together. Then Hadadezer sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the river, and they came to Halam, and Shobach, the commander of Hadadezer's army, went before them. When it was told David, he gathered all Israel, crossed over the Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in battle, awry against David, and fought with him. Then the Syrians fled before Israel, and David killed 700 charioteers and 40,000 horsemen of the Syrians, and struck Shobach, the commander of their army. He died there. And when all the kings who were servants of Hadadezer saw they had defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians were afraid to help the people of Ammon any more. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 through 19. It happened after that the king of the people of Ammon died, and he and his son reigned in his place. Then King David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the sons of Nahash, and his father showed kindness to me. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servant came into the land of the people of Ammon. And the princes of the people of Ammon said to the Lord, Hanan, their Lord, do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to search to the city to spy it out and overthrow it? Therefore Hanan took David's servants, shaved off half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle of their buttocks, and sent them away. When David told David, he, met, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And King David said, Wait at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, the people of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 foot soldiers, from the king of Magath, 1,000 men, and from Ishtal, 12,000 men. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 through 27. Okay. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabah. But David remained at Israel then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roofs of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is that not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house, and a gift of food from the king followed him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of the Lord and did not go down to his house. So when they told David 
saying, Uriah did not go down to the house. David said to Uriah, did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to the house? And Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel of Judah are dwelling in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, wait here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. Now when David called him, he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed and the servants of his Lord. But he did not go down to his house. In the morning it happened that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. So it was while Joab besieged the city that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew there were valiant men. Then the men of the city came out and fought with Joab. And some of the people of the servants of David fell and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war and charged the messenger saying, when you have finished telling the matters of the war, to the king, if it happens that the king's wrath rises and he says to you, why did you approach so near to the city when you fought? Did you not know that you would shoot from the wall? Who struck Abimelech, the son of Jerobethes? Was it not a woman who cast a piece of a milestone on him from the wall so that he died in Thebes? Why did you go near the wall? Then you shall say, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and told David all that Joab had sent him. And the messenger said to David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out to us in the field. Then we drove them back as far as the entrance of the gate. The archers sharp from the wall at your servants, and some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said to the messenger, Thus he shall say to Joab, do not let this thing displease you, for the Lord devours one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it. So encourage him. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when her mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Now, in 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12, it says, Be of good courage, and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God, and may the Lord do what is good in his sight. Now, when we face some major challenges, we can do no better than to find courage in God and to ask the Lord to do what is good in his sight. The Lord loves to honor those who honor him. Well, if you have any questions about today's reading, please um, comment below and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. I'm sorry about stopping during that reading. I, I felt like I was reading chapter 10 over again when I read um, some of those scriptures. So I went ahead and read 11. So um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in with me on Time with Tiffany. And thank you guys so much again for your support. Please remember to join me again on my channel tomorrow and share, comment, like, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to Time with Tippy, where we sip on tea so flavory, eat treats so savory, and enjoy reading these books of the Bible doing Bible in one year. You guys have a blessed, blessed day. Until next time.